Unit 9, Day 4, Other Angle Relationships in Circles. If two lines intersect in a circle, there are three places where the lines can intersect. They can intersect on the circle, they can intersect inside the circle, and they can intersect outside the circle. Last time we talked about what happens when two lines intersect on the circle. Here we have the inscribed angle, and this angle is going to be half of the intercepted arc measure. So today we're going to talk about what happens when they intersect inside the circle and outside the circle. Here's our first theorem for when they intersect inside the circle. It says if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measures of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the two intercepted arcs. So if you look carefully here, we have this measure of angle one. And this is actually going to be exactly the same as this angle because they're vertical angles. Now when you're finding the measure of that angle, when you trace those two lines, you end up having two intercepted arcs, this blue one and this red one. So the way you're going to find the measure of angle one is you're going to add the blue arc and the red arc together and then divide it by two to give you the measure of each of these green angles. This theorem talks about what happens when the two lines intersect outside of the circle. So this says, if a tangent and a secant, two tangents or two secants intersect in the exterior of the circle, then the measure of the angle formed is one half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. So again, we have this measure of angle one out here, outside of the circle. And whether you have a tangent and a secant or two tangents or two secants, you can see that there's two intercepted arcs, one that is outside and further away from the angle and one that's inside and closer to the angle. So in all three cases, you want to take the outside arc, subtract the inside arc, divide it by two, and then you get the angle. So just repeat to yourself, outside minus the inside divided by two equals the angle. Now let's do a couple examples. Here we want to find the measure of angle one, which is the same as those. So we want to take the two intercepted arcs, which is this one, and then plus this one, 33 plus 131, and we want to divide that by two to get the measure of angle one. So that's 164 divided by two equals the measure of angle one. So 82 degrees is equal to the measure of angle one. Go ahead and pause. I want you to try the second one and see if you can catch the extra step that you're going to need to do in this one. Then check back with me and see if you got the right answer. In this one, when you take the two intercepted arcs, 115 and 97, and you add them and divide by 2, you should get 106. Now be careful because 106 is actually the measure of these two angles in here. But the measure of angle 1 is over here. So what you should realize is that the measure of angle one, or the measure of angle one and the one one hundred six, those two are a linear pair and they're supplementary. So the measure of angle one plus one hundred six equals one eighty, and you should have found that the measure of angle one is seventy four degrees. Here, let's do a couple more examples using our other theorem regarding secants and tangents. For this one, here's the measure of angle one and then we want to take the outside arc minus the inside arc divided by 2 gives us the measure of angle 1. So we have 92 minus 43 is 49 divided by 2 and that gives us 24.5 degrees. Now for the second one down here I want you to be careful because we need to take the outside arc and we want to subtract the inside arc. But we're actually not given the measure of the inside arc. So we need to find that first. That inside arc, the outside arc, and then this one that's completely away from the angle, the three of them together add up to 360, the whole circle. So you take 360 and subtract the 134 and the 170 that you know and you're left with 56. 
So this blue arc is 56 degrees. So in order to find the measure of angle one, remember we need to take outside minus the inside divided by two equals the angle. So we get 78 over two, which gives us 39 degrees. So sometimes you might need to do a couple extra steps in order to find either the outside arc or the inside arc before you can use your formula. So go ahead and pause, try these two examples, and then check back with me to see if you got them right. Hopefully you found this first one on the top to equal 36 degrees, and on the bottom the outside arc should be 214 degrees, and you should find the measure of angle 1 equal to 40 degrees. Now here, we're going to talk about what happens when you have two tangents. And it's the same idea as we talked about before. We're going to take the outside arc and subtract the inside arc. Now, again, we're missing the measure of the inside arc. But we know that the outside plus the inside make the whole circle, which is 360. So 360 minus the 270 we have is 90. So this green arc is 90 degrees. Then we want to use our theorem to find the measure of angle 1. The outside minus the inside divided by 2 gives us the measure of angle 1. 180 divided by 2, and the measure of angle 1 is equal to 90 degrees. So go ahead and pause, try the second one, and then check back with me to see if you got it right. Hopefully you found that the outside arc was 222 degrees, and then when we use our theorem, you should get the measure of angle 1 equal to 42 degrees. Now here, these are two examples that look like problems that we did before, except this time, if you notice, the variable, what we're looking for is not the actual angle measure. It's one of the arcs. So for this, all we're going to do is use the same equations we did before, but we have to solve for x and it's going to be in a different place. So we're going to need some of our Algebra 1 skills to come into play. So for this first one, remember, when you have secants or tangents, we're talking about the outside minus the inside, and then divided by 2 is going to equal the angle measure. Now here, all you want to do is solve for x. So we want to put parentheses around this expression, make this into a proportion over 1, and cross multiply. 180 minus x times 1 is 180 minus x, and then 2 times 38 gives us 76. And then if you subtract 180 from both sides, you end up with a negative x is equal to a negative 104. Now in order to get this x positive, either multiply or divide both sides by negative 1, and then you should end up with x is equal to positive 104 degrees. So it's the same idea, just a little bit of algebra work. So we're going to do that here as well. We have the outside arc. Now you have to remember the relationship with this one, plus the other intercepted arc and then divide that by 2 to give us this angle inside. So again, we need to solve for x. So put this side in parentheses, put this one over 1 so it's a proportion, and cross multiply. 105 plus x times 1 is just 105 plus x equal to 230 degrees. Now, subtract 105 from both sides and then we end up with x equal to 125 degrees. Now these are the two theorems we talked about today and two different formulas. You have to be really careful because this is outside minus the inside divided by 2 gives you the angle. And in this one, it's the outside two arcs added together divided by 2 gives you the angle. Be really careful, it's going to be really easy to mix these two theorems up. Alright, that's it, and I'll see you in class.